Medicine interviews have changed this year and are probably going to remain this way for the next few years. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you everything that you need to know about MMI and panel interviews, and also what you need to do to prepare to make sure that you convert this opportunity into an offer when you're applying to medicine. So as always, interviews will be taking place between November and April of the following year, and you could get as little as two weeks notice for your interview, and usually you find out quite quickly after. But that means that really the time to start preparing for your interviews is now. I'm gonna tell you later all of the things that you should have ready so that you have your knowledge up to where it needs to be. Because the way interviews are working these days is that I'm seeing more and more people who aren't part of my uh, Future Doc coaching program. The people outside have come to me often telling me that they've had four interviews and not a single offer. Because what people don't realize is, and this depends basically on the university for how they score their university uh, interviews and how they weight those, but it's really important to understand that if one in four people who interview get a place, that means that you need to be in the top 25%. So you need to kind of not underestimate interviews, which is a big mistake that a lot of people make. So. We're gonna talk about how to make sure that you're in that top 25%, but that's how I want you to think about it if you have an interview coming up. You don't want to just be good enough, you want to know those little extra bits on top which I'm going to teach you that are gonna be the difference between the okay people and the people that really stand out to get an interview. So what's gonna happen when you get invited to interview? They're gonna be a combination of either in-person or online. Here are all the people that are having online interviews this year and Based on how things have gone in a post-COVID world, a lot of universities are saying, well, actually it's a lot more convenient and way easier to interview people online. So those who have kind of gone for that this year are probably gonna be the ones that will stick to it. Equally, the argument for in-person interviews is that you can tell a lot more by having somebody face-to-face -face than you can do from an online video. So the ones that have the capacity to do it are gonna probably stick to in-person interviews for the foreseeable. So these are the people that have stated that they're going to be doing in-person interviews this year. And this is how I expect these changes to remain going forward for the following years. So when you attend your medical interview, whether you are doing MMI or panel interviews, you will have a different combination of staff. Typically what we have is a clinical medical person, so a, a doctor working in hospital, maybe a lecturer, so someone who is a doctor but is in an educational capacity normally, or a researcher maybe. Then you might have a non-medical person. This could be anything from a a med school student themselves who are kind of going or technically are a medical person but haven't qualified yet or you might just get admin staff that are going to be there as a kind of non-medical person or non-medical head to kind of give their in their opinion as well. One of the best places to get updates and information about things that are changing and how to really stand out is if you go to either my blog, if you check out the Future Doc website, or if you go to our socials, I've got a TikTok and a Instagram profile where I'll be updating you regularly on all the news that we're getting, any updates to the stuff that I've just told you I'm about to tell you so that you can really stay up to date. So I'd recommend that you check out those three platforms to get that really useful information that's gonna help you stand out. So before we get into the nitty gritty of the new changes to the panel and MMI interviews, I just wanna take a step back to understand what is the point of these interviews? So why are we interviewing? Because you need to understand why they are doing this so that you can kind of meet their needs for them to tick that box to say that you're a person worthy of being invited to interview. Now the GMC have some guidelines on as to why or some reasons as to why they interview people. And they say the following four things. The GMC states that the first reason is that they want you to understand the career. They want to see that you know what you're letting yourself in for. The second thing they say is that, do you have the right skills? They want to check that you have the traits, the personality, all the things that they need that make a good doctor. The third thing is they want to verify what you've written in your personal statement. They want to see that you are actually who you said you are in those 4,000 characters that you kind of poured your heart out about why you're a great person to become a doctor. So not all medicine uh, or medical schools will be using the personal statement at interview, or some don't use it at all for some places, but it's still important to understand that they a lot of the time we'll be using it, so really brush up on your personal statement before you go into interview. Finally, the other thing that they want to see is dedication. They want to see that this isn't just a whim and that you've demonstrated your commitment to medicine and your curiosity and your real desire to pursue it by consistent and 
constant and long-term action that you've been taking towards building your application. So as you know, there are two types of interview that you can potentially have. One is what we call MMI, which stands for multiple mini interviews, and the other is a panel interview. Now, panel and MMI tend to go, typically the rule is that if there's a panel interview, it's usually with the BMAT universities, and then the MMIs tend to be paired with the UCAT universities. Not 100% accurate, but hard and fast rule is that's kind of what you can expect for each. With the multiple mini interviews, if you don't know what they are, it is a circuit where you go through stations that are anything from five to 10 minutes, and each one either has a piece of paper where you have to do a task, or normally what you'll have is one interviewer and you have a scenario or a series of questions or a certain topic that they will kind of grill you on or put you in a situation where you have to perform a certain task or set of skills. Now, the way an MMI works is that basically you are marked for that station and then once you move on, you forget about it and you go on to the next station and the scores from each one are totted up, averaged out, however the university wants to use it and they kind of get an overall picture of how you perform on a on an entire circuit, so on a grand, on a wide variety of tasks, rather than just one panel interview, which I'll explain in a moment. Typically, in an MMI, what they'll have is about 10 stations. Those can be 10 stations back to back. Some of them, you have a rest station where you just sit there and do nothing and twiddle your thumbs and just compose yourself for the next one. But typically, the MMI stations themselves individually range from about five to 15 minutes. The mode or the kind of typical one is about a 10 minute station. Now you can still get MMI interviews online, whereas in person you'll be rotating around a set of stations, so it'll literally be a circuit that you just move through. Uh, online it'll kind of be more that the the stations move through you, so obviously you stay where you are and then they will just pair you with a different person in a breakout room or however they work it on teams so that the, the station comes to you, so to speak. But they will still ask the same kind of questions and the same topics, which I'll talk about later to tell you what to prepare for. Now the other type is what we call traditional or panel interviews. Now this is the kind of typical, what you would imagine an interview would be like where you either go into a room or again online and you have three or four people, again, of varying backgrounds, usually medical and maybe an admin staff, and they will ask you questions and it will be more like just a long form chat. It will be anything from 20 to 40 minutes and they'll ask you a variety of questions. They'll ask you the typical why medicine, why this university, things about your personal statement, ethical scenarios or potential situations that they might put you in and they just want to see how you'll handle that. Now this one is, like I say, a lot more long form and they can get a flavour of your personality a bit more over the course of that time. So regardless of which of those you're doing, here are some of the things that they want to see that you need to demonstrate that you are stand out in to make sure that you get the kind of mark that you need to get offered a place. So here are the things that you should be on the lookout to be demonstrating to interviews when you sit either your panel or MMI interview. So the ways that they'll test that via a variety of means, whether you are doing MMI or panel, are via asking some common questions, and these are the typical ones that you can expect or they might put you in some fake scenarios. These are the typical scenarios that they put you through to see how you handle those. Or then they might maybe ask you to perform some tasks and these are the sorts of things that you can expect. So finally, and most importantly, these are the things that you need to prepare if you want to stand out at interview. So have a look very closely at this list and pay close attention to each of those to make sure that you stand out. Particularly the last one, pivotal cases, is really, really important. So if you want to find out how you can get a really reliable and really up-to-date solid resource bank for how to really smash these questions and just have that little bit extra that's going to make you stand out. Check out this resource here where it kind of provides a really neat all-in-one resource that's going to give you everything for that. Otherwise, if you want to check out this playlist here where I take all the subjects that we've mentioned and give you a quick seven to ten minute rundown on how to smash those parts of the interview, check out that video there. But thank you for watching today and best of luck for your interview.